So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> David Ingram, Kyle one of my Hills. favorite fucking people on the planet. I'm so glad you're here. Me too. I missed you. I can't believe that this all worked out in such a spontaneous and we, way. We just had about a podcast and a half before the show even started. So I want to get back into what we were just talking about. Uh, I think where you're leading was people kind of pretending to be other people or trying to figure out is is this person genuine in the way that they're acting or are they just trying to be perceived a certain way we all know people in our lives that you know they, there's just something not right there's it's not authentic and but this i question though is the search there though if by observing that other people are on a path and let's say that even at the moment that that person post or says something that could be perceived as being inauthentic. Just the fact that they're aware that something that someone else is saying or something that they're reading is resonating enough with them to make them take that small action of trying to either emulate it, repeat it, is that this is why I love talking to you because I I wouldn't have thought about it like that, but you do, and you tend to see the best in people, which is awesome. Um, I didn't I didn't really think about it. It's true. It's it's a it's a sign they're on the path. They might be at like the very beginning. It might be fake. So what? They're, well, it they're it's like to, fake it till you make it. Right. I was going to say it goes yeah. back to what you hear in You're recovery started. rooms. Fake it till you make it. I've always had a sort of an issue with that, only because. It does seem so inauthentic, but aren't most things that we do in life learned behavior? And so if I look at you, which I do and have in the past, as sort of a mentor for my spirituality, someone in the beginning could have looked at me and said, David's acting all weird. He's saying things that don't sound like David. But you know what? There was a question for me in my life that something wasn't working And I looked at someone that I admired, someone that seemingly things were working for, and I go, you know what? I want a piece that. So you have to start somewhere. So does it really matter what the catalyst was? It doesn't matter. That's gold. That's gold, man. In the session. I know. We're done. (laughs) That's so good. It's so true. Like, you're not going to start... It's like we have a uh, we have ADD all of us, and we we don't want to go through the process of transition to something else. Like we were, we just watched that awesome video. Right, check it out if you haven't. I think it's called um, "We're from the Future," like Revolution of Love or something. Like just YouTube that. Um, where you know the video wants it's 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 um, pushing for a, a love revolution, right, and. We, we really want change. We want to see change. We see all the terrible things that are going on. We want it to be better, but we have like no patience for it to just happen Absolutely. organically. It's like, no, it must happen now, right now. We need to push hard. We need to pull down this government Absolutely. and just rip it out and start a new one. And it's like, we, you, there needs to be a transition period. Well, right? and uh, the fact that we need to for people or governments or yeah. anything, there and, needs to be a transition period. And uh, and to know that you're not going to get it in the mm. beginning. It's the same thing, sort of like every single New Year's. I have the same resolution, and that is to start yoga. I start it <laughs> January three weeks in hate it every time <laughs> but i keep thinking that suddenly january 2015 i'm gonna be great at yoga yeah 
But I don't give it a chance yeah. to run its course and work its magic. No, again, it may not be right for me the same way that what level of spirituality I'm on may not be right for someone else. But you have to start and sort of stick with it yeah. and to, to so you, that you can explore what's working for you. You got to at least try it. Got to try right? it. Same like meditation. You we, can't do everything, but like you'll never know if you like meditation unless you try meditation. Absolutely. And you'll, we, we yeah. get caught up on someone else's thing. Okay, I'm looking at meditation and this person loves it and can do it for 30 minutes a day. And I, with my ego and my naive naivety. Nativity? Nativity. Nativity? I know. Yeah. I always the word that saves me. Uh, the, the, you always go, but but I can't do that. But you don't understand that your 10 seconds is just as relevant to where you are as the person who's oh, six, yeah. seven, eight hours a day yeah. meditating. Yeah. Because it's it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't think so, right? Like that's the funny thing about meditation. After a while you realize like you you're this isn't gonna give you a, anything out of it you know most well, it's people are not going to give me what you got but most people like get into it because they like think they'll get a reward right <laughs> or something like the, the, it's like i'll be just be a better person if i meditate every day the reward is in the moment Kyle. it's in that magic moment and it in the journey the process of doing it it's not you don't get anything from it I went to a lecture not long ago on the very thing that you said, and they said the biggest failure for people beginning to meditate is they come into it thinking that it's going to be this. Ah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Dude, but it's so funny because this goes back to what you're saying at the beginning. That's still cool. Like if you if you're yeah. getting into it to get something out of it, great. Better than you're to not still do getting it. into it. Yeah, you know you're still like trying something new and seeing like if that's for you. It's so true with everything with training. I mean, I'm I'm fascinated with the process that people go through in on the training floor. Isn't um, it amazing? And, and what they think they're doing there, right? And then as time goes on, they start to like they go through stages. And they start off. They, the, the the immediate thought is just like meditation. I'm gonna get a six pack. I'm gonna get muscles. Get I'm gonna get skinny. I'm gonna and everybody's gonna love me. And I'm gonna get a promotion because right. of it. And I'm gonna have all these friends. The story just <laughs> weaves. And everybody's gonna look up to me. Right. And they're gonna ask me like, "How did you do it?" Exactly. And like, that's what gets them into the gym. That's yeah. where it starts. And then, like, step two, it, like, it becomes, okay, I'm going to um, get stronger. People are going to look up to me because of, like, what I can do. You know, I can balance on this Swiss ball or I can um, do this Olympic lifting movement or I can deadlift 300 pounds or, like, and then it becomes, like, it, it's a little bit less... I'm going to the grandiose in what you're going to get out of it, but you're still focusing on what you're going to get something and you're going to get that respect from everybody. I love where you're going with that though. Cause it sort of, as I think about meditation and then I think about the example you just brought up about the weight floor. Isn't it interesting that what we go into and the way we initially approach something we may continue on our very amateurish, childlike ways of approaching something with the same reasoning, the same desires of the uh, of, of a result. But something transformative is happening at the exact same time. Most of the time, you're not even aware to way later in the process, and you're reflective, and you go that really wasn't about getting a six pack or that really wasn't about me feeling oh, right the meditation. But you know what? You went there, you started. Yeah. You're starting that process and you start to get these rewards and not even really know where they're coming from. Right. So you start to like realize you don't realize it yet, but you're feeling good from the workout. You're the workout is making you focus your attention into like getting this, this, 
task done right now, the thing that's like right in front of you, and you have to the turn bar off. Is you have there. to turn off your past, and you have to turn off your future, and you have to focus in on this thing right now, and you get it done, and your will just helps you lift that bar and do do a task, do a weight, do something you've never done before, and all of a sudden you have a new vision of yourself, and and you've grown in this moment, but you don't even know that's why you felt so good. No. You're still just thinking like. Oh, like I, I I'm gonna people look great. like yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Look great. but yes. it's over doing it over and over. You start to reevaluate. Oh, what is it exactly about this? That right. I like? And then you know, like the the third stage of it is when you see it. You you get that what what you get out of it is the journey of it. You get that what you get out of it lives in the moment of doing it. Right. You. It's not a result oriented thing it's a process oriented thing and that's very funny that that would happen on a course where something was about an end result that you could see but then what you actually do you're on a path that has no end whatsoever right you never stop there is no goal per se except for growth yeah. and that's it yeah it never it, it never uh yeah, you never get there. Yeah. Right? And isn't you that never get when there. you become okay with that, what you just said, isn't that so liberating? Because for me, getting there in the beginning, like to think, okay, uh, I, I have friends, for example, in the past, certainly from, from my community that would get their bodies all ready for a certain party or, or their summer body. Mm -hmm. So there was that goal in mind, there was that thing. Well, first of all, we all know from experience that usually when that happens and usually when you get there, you don't even know that you're there. Anyway. Right. Because now you're thinking about something. You're else. thinking about something else. The great thing is when you let that all go, the the expectation and the the goal and just let it be the journey and wherever the journey goes. It's going to go no matter what. Yeah, you can't help I mean, it. Yeah, you can put all your little desires in the world on it, and you can put all your expectations, and this is what I wish, 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 wish. But the thing is, it, you're, the journey is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's all perception. Yes, absolutely. It's all perception. I had, uh, I had a psychedelic trip um, a couple of weeks ago where, and it was very intense, um, where I felt that I got lost and I started to have expectations about what was going to happen. And, uh, it started turning into this sort of hellish like experience for mm -hmm. no particular reason. It's not like I was seeing scary things right. or, but I, I was uh, the sensation beginning, of being lost. I was, was becoming, scary. yeah, I was getting very lost and I was being overcome by fear of not knowing where this is going to go. And then fear of like, well, what if it goes really bad? You know, and then my expectation of it going really bad made it really bad. You know, it right. started to become really bad. But there was a lesson embedded in it. And the experience was very timeless. So it felt like I was kind of in this this hellish state for a long time. And eventually it felt like I just tired out. And I was like, okay, tired of the fight. I'm going to be in this spot. This is where I'm going to be. Right. So I might as well set up camp. Say, okay, this is where I am, and I'm going to make the most of it. And the moment the I did ended. that, it the moment it ended. It's like the curtains pulled back, and just a stadium of cheer and happy, and the biggest party ever. Just like you just accepted, just the moment. Absolutely. Nothing even really changed. Right, nothing changed. It was just my perception. Kyle, it's the same thing, and you'll know this from the experience of being in the tank as well. The only time you start to falter in the water and sort of feel like you're going to sink, even though you've been told 5,000 <laughs> times that this is three inches deep or right, whatever, right. you're not going to sink, yeah. is when you start to think, I'm uncomfortable yeah. or I'm, I'm panicking. But the minute you just go, you know what? I'm in a tank. I, I'm in this place. Everything calms again because you accept the condition that you're in because you can't alter the condition no matter how much you want it to no, be it's yeah. part of the journey and that's life yes right? you're here look around like right. stop where you're at well, this is where you are well, you are here you're not anywhere else yes how is it and nine and that's the coolest thing about meditation too is when you can pull yourself into right now 
or just a meditative life, if you pull yourself into what's going on right now, everything's always fine. Always. It's always you could be you could have somebody just a doctor just told you that you're gonna die of a terrible cancer, but right now everything's fine. But cause right you now are, you're fine. Exactly, you're I fine. love that. Yes. The next moment you're still fine. Even like when you're on your deathbed and your family's around you're you, still you're fine. still fine. Kyle, I heard another thing the other day. I loved it. Said until your last breath that you take. When you're knocked down, the only thing you have to do is get up one more time. Yeah. When you're down again, you yeah. get up one more time. So until there's no more breaths, it's one more time. And it's the same thing that you're, I feel like that you're saying about sort of being in a meditative state in and in sort of a, a, a position that you just, no matter how bad the circumstance is, you accept it because it's okay because you're still here. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you about my new obsession? Yeah. It. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna go do this in a couple months. It's. It's, it's called Seal Fit 2020X. 20, 20 like Navy Seals type thing. Yeah. It's. It's like a week long program where you go through a very Navy Seal style, like so the, you week, uh, just the hell week of uh, just getting beaten down for a full wow. week here type this in jail pull up uh on on youtube pull up seal fit 20x now is it run kyle from a standpoint that Dude, these, these people are doing it from like a barry's boot camp type no. way it's it's not for that reason <laughs> no. no it goes back to what we were saying is if you can the only way to get through this week is to Except. focus on right now right now you're fine don't think about the fact you have 24 hours of no sleep and carrying things over your head and sandy, wet, starving. Just take care of this moment. Focus on right now. Focus on right now. You know, keep doing it. It's the uh, the shorter one, the one right under it. There. Yeah, watch this, Dave. What does 20X mean? I've been living in this skin and I had never truly met myself until I had been put under pressure. of 20 times more. Incredible. Dude, I am terrified, but I'm, I'm obsessed. Like, Absolutely. I got to do it. I got to do it. Like, Absolutely. I've been looking. I've been waiting for a next thing. Like, I have ADD. I have trainer ADD. Well, there you go. I know. Yeah. It's going to happen. Uh, where I got is really, this? It, it's in California. Wow. It's called Seal Fit. Yeah. They fuck you up, man. No, I'm just curious. <laughs> but it's all, it's all mental well, training. That's it's exactly all mental what I was going to say. It did, I'm sure you've looked into this. Do they require a preset certain they have, physical? They have a standard. It, I but it's say. not crazy. It's like a certain amount of push-ups, certain amount of pull-ups, run a mile in a certain amount of time. It's If you saw any of the guys in, in that video, it's not like... Jacked guys all the time. They weren't, yeah, the world's superhuman athletes. And... What's really cool? I, what there's an hour long documentary about this too that I highly recommend you watch. The you get an insight as to the the way the coaches coach, and they're crazy. They're just spraying face like water in their faces. I saw like that. Ask you know they're they're giving them orders no matter how perfect they do it. They're like failed throwing their like uh their uh, they have a fake gun like throwing their fake gun making them go crawl and get it like just beating them down right. mentally emotionally physically and. You're watching it and you're like, this is a mess. Like these guys are just mean. <laughs> and, but then they they interview the coaches and they're very well thought out and they're explaining like, no, like this part of the process, this is when you have to break someone down mentally 
to the point where they become like clay. Like they, you have to start from a basic point where they, they've they given up their ego. They let go of their ego. Ego is dead. You kill the ego. That any concern for just your future self or your past self, you're focused on like right now. You're putting yourself back into that early human state right. where they're Formula just concerned to- with right now right do survive right now be part of a group right now and and let go of that future past and once they, they'll explain like once we get everybody to that point then we move on to like this stage and that's a huge responsibility for the trainer oh, i mean you've got to have someone that it, really really is responsible to take you to a point mm-hmm. of almost brainwashed for example oh, totally. and a cleansing totally but I've always felt in situations like that because I've had a, enough of a taste of one or two trainers in my life who sort of broke me down, mm. and, and which was good. The problem was, Kyle, they weren't equipped to build you back up. Yeah, That's the biggest thing. I think there are many people in life that just from the very nature of their personalities, they're sort of born leaders and they're, they're born uh, – to be able to to be very strong, that they can tear someone down, but to build them back mm-hmm. up, like what this looks like it does, that is in a really incredible position to be in. Oh, I'm so fascinated. Yes. I, I, I want that's why I want to do it so much. Absolutely. I mean, there's no other. There's no better way to learn emotional training, mental training. You know, the, the I want to I want to go and feel the process. I want to I want to experience what it is that they're doing to people. You know, it's very funny. Wouldn't it be interesting to note, and we'll know this when you come back. Yeah. But it would be interesting to see if that eventually that technique could be used in a therapeutic oh, yeah. process. So a person who was going back and forth to therapy for years and were not getting results. Part of it is they haven't learned to let go of whatever is holding them back, whatever baggage they are. Yeah. They haven't gone back to zero. Yeah. But I think what happens is most people, including therapists, aren't in a position or want the responsibility of building someone back. I know that's true. And um, what a gift it would be if we can if we can do that. That Absolutely. that could totally be the next step in training. That could be like yeah, you know I'm. I'm so excited in the frontier of like mentally training clients. No you know, I think it's so important. Doubt. I think we've been going about this biomechanical route for a long time. And, and I think we're finding that. dead ends. You know, we're kind of saying like, th- this is important. We Now we know how the body functions, but we're hitting this point where no matter how well we know how it functions, people aren't getting past here, you well, know? And I think that that new realm is in the mind. I just was speaking to my trainer, who's your friend, yep. um, day before yesterday about this very thing. And I said to him, I've almost wanted to fill out a questionnaire and start a documentary and go around to people that I admire and look at just in the fitness world of why are you able to stay on course? Why are you able to? To focus so what is it about you because you're we could both be doing the same exercises and I'm like sort of what you're saying we sort of all know the biodynamic uh, a part about this we know how mm-hmm. to get the body built in a certain way what really lacks is discipline focus and, and that's how do you train that how do you, yeah, train, how that? Do you train that and, and and is it a question Kyle is it that am am I trying as a trainer? Are are you trying to give me as a client a desire for something that may not be a desire that it is innately in you? So can you as a trainer? Do you think yes? Yes, I love because it's it. I do. I don't believe it's innate. You I don't. Think that, I think that somewhere along the line, everybody that has it learned it. Somewhere mm. at some point, okay, at some point, whether like it or not, like maybe they didn't consciously learn it, but they just happened to have an experience that that helped them develop that. Okay, I love the words you just used then experience because I think something sort of catastrophic or cataclysmic, 
Cataclysmic. Cataclysmic yeah. has yes. to happen. Yeah. I think it has to be dramatic. There, again, I know we're not talking about people particularly, but there's a guy at the gym that we know that that works out and loves it oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. He, he wasn't just born that he, way. He, well, was he? <laughs> kind it, of. Okay, He's that's born what with I the seed know. of it. Okay. Like, I think we're all, the, the way, oh, man, okay, we got to finish, know, finish this podcast. We gotta, we'll do another episode soon. But I think we all have the potential for those sort of traits to be unlocked. But it takes a event. It takes an activity to unlock that seed and let that that seed grow. Do we have time for me to ask? Do you know what yours was? Yeah, it was football for sure. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it was it was the discipline that came with that. The the camaraderie, the teamwork that you couldn't let anybody down. Going through hell, seeing what you were capable of. It was terrible, dude. You you work all year long, three hundred sixty five days a year, in and out of film and 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 practice and training for 11 games 11 11 days not even full days you get like 11, 11 moments. four hour yes. periods like holy hell and it, i think you yeah. just nailed it because i can take my example as it opposed to yours i through various circumstances never participated in any team sports growing up so fitness now yeah, is very is exciting and sport. very new to me. But I get now what you're talking about. That This is my moment. It just happened much later in in time. Yeah. This is it. This is your moment. This is my moment All in right, time. Got to awesome. end it. Great having you. Great talking to you. Love we're going to do this again because you're really to. good at it. Love it. All right. Next, we're having Ethan on. So everybody looking forward to that. All right. Later.